Good day, grade 11. Welcome to this next lesson in trigonometry. In this lesson, we're going to carry on doing some identities. We're just basically going to prove this identity. And this is based on your grade 10 identities. It's a revision. And then we're going to start on reduction formula and then move on and maybe do some examples of reduction formula and then co-functions, etc., etc. So let's start off by doing the proof of this. Now, remember that I said to you in the last lesson that when you're doing a proof, you cannot just assume that the left hand side equals the right hand side. What you need to do is you actually need to prove that the left hand side equals the right hand side. That's why it says prove, okay? But so what we're going to do is we have to choose a side to start with and you need to choose a side that you can actually do something with. So obviously one of a sine beta is not really useful to me. I can't really break that down anymore. But this has definitely got potential. So I am going to start with the left hand side. So left hand side is cos beta over sine beta plus tan beta all multiplied by cos beta. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, the first thing I'm going to do is change my tan beta to sine over cos, okay? So that becomes cos beta over sine beta plus sine beta over cos beta all multiplied by cos beta, right? Then I need a common denominator. My common denominator is going to be sine beta cos beta. Do you agree? So then sine beta goes into sine beta leaves me with cos beta. Cos beta times cos beta is cos squared beta. Plus cos beta goes into this multiplied by sine beta. Sine beta multiplied by sine beta is sine squared beta. All multiplied by cos beta. It's starting to look very, very good. Cos squared beta plus sine squared beta is 1 over sine beta cos beta all multiplied by cos beta cancel cancel and you're left with one over sine beta which equals the right hand side yay we genii however you do need to remember your restrictions and your restrictions are when is this not valid and the only time this is not valid is when this sine beta is equal to naught so we're going to go sine beta equals naught because we want to find out when it can't be happening okay so we're going to go shift sine shift sine of zero close bracket equals and it's zero Okay, because why? I think about it. The sine graph does this. The sine graph goes la 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 la. So it's 0, 90, <clears throat> 180, 270, and 360. So basically, this cannot work when beta, sine beta cannot equal naught. So therefore, beta cannot equal naught um, or 180 plus or minus K, or just go naught plus or minus k360 degrees, okay? If it equals zero, then this whole thing is going to be zero and therefore it is going to be, um, sorry, I'm just wondering about the 180. I think we have to say or 180 degrees plus or minus k360 degrees because we're covering both those quadrants. Okay, so it works both at sine equals zero and sine equals 180. And the 360 just means that obviously your sine graph can carry on and on and on. So we're basically covering every single value there where it can possibly equal zero. So this would be 180 plus 360, and this would be 360 plus 360, and so on. So we'd always have the points covered where sine of beta would equal zero, and therefore this would be one divided by zero, which is undefined. So you need to say that this is going to be the cases where you cannot this will not work, is when beta is equal to zero plus or minus k360, or beta does not equal, beta equals 180 degrees plus k360. 
Okay, it is very important that you do your restrictions. Very, very, very important. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to talk reduction formula. So a reduction formula are 180 plus or minus, okay? Um, theta. So let me show you what we mean by this, okay? Let's pretend we've got this circle, okay? And this would normally be our theta, right? Um, and let's say we draw a second point here where this is a theta away from the x-axis as well, okay? And what I'm going to say is, okay, fine, let's pretend just for fun, just to make this a little bit easier for ourselves. Let's pretend that the radius of the circle is 2. So we're going to make the radius of the circle 2 and the radius of the circle 2. Okay, right? Um, and let's just pretend, just to make this easy for ourselves, that this is a 30 degree triangle, that this is 30 degrees and this is 30 degrees. So then, do you agree? I could say, okay, fine. If that's the case, you've got 60, 30, 90, 2, 1, root 3. So if this angle here is 30 degrees and that is 2, let's make this a little bit easier for us. I'm going to change this to be just to make it easier. This is the 30, okay, and this is the 60. Then this would be 1 and this would be root 2. So do you agree that this point here, okay, if that's this point here, P, is going to be root, sorry, root 3. It's going to be root 3 across and 1 up. It's going to be root 3 across and 1 up, okay? So it's root 3, 1. So that point there, that P, the coordinate for it is root 3, 1, okay? So similarly, similarly, if that's the case, then this is going to be minus root 3, but it's still a positive 1, okay? Do you agree? So therefore, this value here is going to be... Um, minus root 3, 1, okay. So what am I trying to say about this? What am I getting to? Okay, so if this is theta and that is theta, do you agree the whole of that angle there is 180 minus theta? So in other words, these values that I'm giving you, yeah, 2 minus root 3 and 1, are exactly the same as if I was working with 180 minus theta. That's the same thing, okay? So therefore, these values here, 2, 1, and minus root 3, are actually for 180 minus theta. So now, let us talk about what would happen then if we look at sine, cos, and tan. Sine, okay, let's just suck it to it. And let's do sine of theta cos of theta and tan of theta. So in this case, we're using this triangle here, right? The basic triangle. And sine of theta, remember we said this was root 3 and this was 1, okay? So sine of theta is opposite of our hypotenuse. So it's root, it's opposite, which is 1, over the hypotenuse, which is 2. Okay, so that is going to be a half. Cos theta is adjacent of our partner, so it's root 3 over 2, root 3 over 2. And tan theta is opposite over adjacent, so it's 1 over root 3. Okay, get it. Now let's have a look at this side here. So now we've got, like we said, we just said that if I take theta from here, it gives me this value here where this is 2, this is 1, this is minus root 3, and that is 2, okay? And that point there, that line, represents either theta from the x-axis or it's the same as saying 180 minus theta. So I can therefore say sine of 180 degrees minus theta. I can do cos of 180 minus theta. And I can do tan of 180 minus theta. Okay, so again, we're just going to be using Sokoto, but we're going to be looking inside, oh, darn it, sorry. We're going to be looking inside the blue triangle, the blue triangle, so, mm, blue triangle, okay. 
So in this case, we're looking at this angle here, okay, because it represents this. So sine is going to be opposite of our partner, so it's one half. Cos is adjacent over hypotenuse, so it's minus root 3 over 2. And tan is going to be opposite over adjacent, so it's minus 1 over root 3. Okay, so do you see that we can obviously say that sine theta is the same as sine of 180 minus theta? Okay, but that cos theta is equal to minus cos of 180 minus theta and tan theta is equal to minus tan of 180 minus theta. So the only one that really works for it is sine. Sine theta is equal to minus sine theta. Okay, I mean, is equal to sine of 180 minus theta. Okay, so that's quite cool, right? Now let's have a look at 180 plus. So again, same principle, we're looking at using just our triangle, I mean, our things where we've got that this length, let me just put this in black first to make it easier for you to see. I'm going to say that the length of this is 2, okay, and the length of this radius is 2. Okay, so therefore, if that's the case, and I'm going to again, let's assume, just to make it easier for ourselves, that this is 30 degrees, and that is 30 degrees, okay? So then I'm going to drop a line down here and a line down here, right. So now again, I'm going to make this the red triangle. There's the red triangle. Okay. And this is obviously 90 degrees. And I now have this triangle again where this is 30 degrees, that is 60. This is root 2. This let's try again. This is 2 root 3 and 1. So this is going to be root 3 and 1. Okay, nothing's changed there. But now let's talk about this triangle on the left hand side. If this is theta, then do you agree that the whole way around is going to be 180 plus theta? Okay, so when we find the coordinates of this point here, we're actually looking for it for 180 plus theta. So in that case, this here is minus root 3 and this is minus 1. So this point is going to be minus root 3 minus 1. Okay, so then let us now do our sine, cos, and tan. So let's use red. So again, we're going to write so, um, toa. And we're going to say, well, sine of theta is obviously opposite over hypotenuse, which is a half. Cos of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, that's so root 3 over 2. And tan of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent, which is 1 over root 3. Now let's have a look at the blue triangle over here, which is in the 180 plus theta side. So we've got sine of 180 plus theta, which is going to be what? Sine of 180 plus theta is going to be opposite over hypotenuse, so it's minus a half. Cos of 180 plus theta is going to be um, adjacent over hypotenuse, so it's minus root 3 over 2. And then tan of 180 plus theta is going to be opposite over adjacent, so it's going to be minus 1 over negative root 3, which is equal to 1 over root 3. So in this quadrant here with 180 plus, we can say that tan theta is equal to tan of 180 plus theta, and the values are the same for that, but for the rest, they are opposites, okay? But do you remember the cost diagram, guys? Just to point this out to you, do you remember the cost diagram? This is all stations to Cave Town. And what did we learn? We learned that everything was positive here, only the sign was positive here, only the tan was positive here, and therefore only the cos is going to be positive there. So do you see with the sine of 180 minus rule, it actually obeyed that. Again, all stations 
to Cape Town. We are saying that the value of sine theta is the same as si value of sine 180 minus theta. Okay. Similarly, over here, we're looking at the third quadrant. Okay. So we're saying that the value of tan of theta over here is the same as the value of tan of 180 plus theta over here. Okay, so now let's talk about theta minus 180 degrees. Theta minus 180 degrees. Okay, so that's not going to be that complicated because of the fact that we just have to think a little bit about what's happening here. Do you agree? Again, we can just go, this is a little bit of a draw, different drawing, but this drawing here is going to be, this is alpha, then this gear is going to, and so if this is alpha, okay, do you agree that the whole of this is going to be 180 minus alpha, okay? 180 minus alpha takes you back there. So if this is two and this is three degrees, for example, and then do you agree that this year would be um, root three and this would be one. Now, if we take it back here, you can see that that again is going to be negative two, uh, negative one, and root three. And do you see that's identical? Oh, sorry, wrong. I did the two and the three. Root three. <sighs> sorry, 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 sorry. Um, this is going to be two again, and this is going to be negative root three. And do you see that that is identical to this? to this, where this is 2 minus 1 minus 3, 3. So 180 plus theta, 180 plus theta is going to give you the same answers as theta minus 180 degrees. Okay, now let's talk about the cost diagram. We actually have already spoken about it. I reminded you about it. I said that from that we can work out that all of your trigonometric functions are going to be positive in the first quadrant. Only sine is positive in the second quadrant. Only tan is positive in the third quadrant. And only cos is positive in the fourth quadrant. So now let's look at applying the reduction formula. Okay, so there are two ways that they can ask us to apply it. The one is to talk about angles and the other is to talk about numbers. Um, so let's have a look at this, okay? So we've got sine of 163 over cos of 197 plus tan 17 plus cos of 180 minus theta, tan of 180 plus theta. So the first thing I'm going to do is draw my cost diagram or stations to Cape Town or whatever you learnt. Okay, and then just to make life easy, I'm going to go 0, 90, 180, 270, and 360. You really don't have to do that. It's just to make it a little bit easier. Okay, so sine of 163, do you agree that that's the same as sine of 180 degrees minus 17? Okay, just think about this, 163 plus 17, 3 and 7 is 10, carry 1, 6 and 1 is 7, that's 80. So there you go, sine of 180 minus 17. This is the same as cos of 180 plus 17. Okay, plus tan 17, plus cos of 180 minus theta. Okay, so do we agree that the cos of 180 minus theta has got the same value as cos of theta? Okay, remember we did this. Let me go, just go back. No, it's this way. We said that, what are we doing? 180 plus or minus, I've forgotten, minus. So if you look over here, you can see that cos of theta is root 3 over 2 and cos of 180 minus theta is also root 3 over 2. It's just got a negative sign here. And I'll explain that to you with respect to the cos diagram in a second. Okay, so therefore the value of this stays the same. So that is just going to be cos theta. However, because this is now in the second quadrant and cos is negative, it becomes minus cos theta. Okay, multiplied by tan of 180 plus theta means it's going to be in the third quadrant and tan, that just becomes tan theta. Okay, so now let's see if we can make this easier. Sine of 180 minus 17, remember that this means 
that it's the same as sine 17. So this is just sine 17. And we've just spoken about cos of 180 minus theta. Now let's talk about cos of 180 plus 17. That's going to be in the second quadrant. And the only thing positive in the second quadrant is tan. So this becomes negative cos 17 plus tan 17 plus, actually minus, cos theta multiplied by sine theta over cos theta. Okay, remember we're just simplifying, okay? So, do you agree then this becomes minus tan 17, because sine divided by cos is tan, plus tan 17, okay, minus, and this cancels with this, and you just have to sine theta, okay? So, now we've got minus tan 17 plus tan 17, and they cancel. So, the correct answer is just minus sine theta. Okay, let's look at another example. It says determine the value of the expression without the use of a calculator. So I'm seeing 150, 30, and 210. As soon as I see without the use of a calculator, I'm immediately going to draw my special triangles. I'm not seeing any fives, so it makes me think I don't need to draw the 45 degree angle triangle. So it's going to be 60, 30, 90, 2, 1 root 3. I'm also going to need my class diagram, all stations to Cape Town. Okay, so tan of 150 is the same as tan of 180 minus 30, right? Multiplied by sine 30 minus cos of 180 plus 30. Okay, so now tan of 180 minus 30 is going to be in the second quadrant. And that is negative, so it becomes negative tan 30 multiplied by sine 30, we'll just leave that as it is, minus cos 180 plus 30 is in the second third quadrant, so that becomes a negative, so it's negative cos 30. Okay, so minus times the plus is a minus. Now we're going to do tan 30, so we need Sokotoa. So we're doing the 30, that angle there. So tan 30 is opposite over adjacent. So it's 1 over root 3. Multiplied by sine 30. Sine 30, which is opposite over hypotenuse. So it's root 3 over 2 minus negative. Cos 30 is adjacent over hypotenuse. Uh, this is wrong then. I made a mistake. I made a mistake. Why does it not want to give me the razor? This is going to be 1 over 2 because it's sine 30 which is opposite of our part news. Then we've got cos 30 which is adjacent of our part news. That's so root 3 over 2. Right, so now common denominator over here is going to be 2 root 3 and that's going to be negative 1. Minus times minus is a plus root 3 over 2. So you can choose to leave it like this or what you can do is you can join it up. So we can say well the common denominator there is going to therefore be 2 root 3. So it's going to be minus 1 plus root 3 multiplied by root 3 which is minus 1 plus 3 over 2 root 3, which is 2 over 2 root 3. These cancel, and you're left with 1 over root 3. And there you go. That's the final answer. So that's quite a nice question because it included your um, reduction formula. It included your special triangles. It included your cast diagram. And it included your soccer toe. So it's actually a very nice question. Okay, let's try this one. It says tan 180 degrees plus alpha multiplied by cos of 180 degrees minus alpha all over sine of 180 degrees minus alpha. Okay, so again, what do we need? In this case, we don't need any special triangles, but we do need a big cast diagram. So let's draw it out. A all stations to Cape Town. Okay, and we know that this is 0, 90 
180, 270 and back to ground, 360. Okay, right, so now tan of 180 plus alpha, we know is gonna have the same value as alpha, but tan of 100 plus alpha is in this quadrant, but luckily for us, tan is positive in this quadrant, so it's just tan alpha. Multiplied by cos of 180 minus alpha. 180 minus alpha is in the second quadrant and cos is therefore negative. So it's minus cos alpha. All of a sine of 180 minus alpha. Well, sine happens to be positive there. So it's just sine alpha. Awesome. Now what do we do? We need to sort this out. We need to actually simplify this. So it becomes sine alpha all over cos alpha multiplied by negative cos alpha all over sine alpha. So what does that become? It becomes, this is multiplication, right? So it cancels with this one. So you've got negative sine alpha all divided by sine alpha, which equals negative one. Sure. Okay, so grade 12s, as you're doing this with me, oh, sorry, grade 11s, as you're doing this with me, I hope you're going slightly ahead. Um, if you're not and you're really struggling with this, then rather just sit and watch, okay, so you can follow what's going on. And then what I'd really like to suggest you do is that you come back and watch the recording of it. So you get the recording the same way that you got to the live show. And then all you do is watch this. And what I would like you to do is suggest you do is that you stop the question, the video, just at the beginning of the question and try it for yourself and then watch the video and see if you get it right. Right, now let's talk reduction formula of 360 plus or minus theta, okay? So let's talk about this. Again, what we're gonna do is we're going to talk about um, the fact that we're going to assume that this is again to just make life easy and that the angle is 30 degrees, okay? Just to make it easy. So we're going to assume that this is 30 and the length of this is 2. So therefore the length of that will be 2 and that will also be 30. Okay, and then do you realize that that there, 360 minus theta, is exactly the same as minus theta? And we actually did that in the example earlier, okay? So therefore, we can say that that is represented by 360 minus theta, okay? So 360 minus theta is the same thing as just minus theta. You need to understand that. So if this is 2, Okay, and this, if we actually redraw that, this is 30 degrees, this is two, that is going to be one and this is going to be root three. So this length here is one and that is root three and root three and this is one. So let's look at sine theta again. Sine theta is gonna be, remember we were looking at Sakatoa. So sine theta is going to be opposite of our partners, which again is going to be a half. Cos theta is equal to adjacent of our partners, which is root 3 over 2. And tan theta is opposite over adjacent, which is 1 over root 3. Now let's talk 360 minus theta. Remember, this isn't just 1, it's minus 1, but that is a positive root 3. So let's talk sine of 360 minus theta. Okay, so this is going to be the opposite over the part new, so it's going to be negative 1 over 2, so it's negative a half. But we expected that because sine is negative in this quadrant. The only thing that's positive in this quadrant is cos. So let's check it. Cos of 360 minus theta is going to be um, adjacent of our part new, so it's going to be root 3 divided by 2, so it's just root 3 divided by 2, which is awesome because we are getting the right answer. The fact that cos is positive, okay, and then finally tan of 360 minus theta is opposite over adjacent, so therefore it's going to be negative 1 over adjacent, which is root 3. There you go. So you can see the tan there is the same value. It is just negative because it's a negative quadrant for tan. 
Okay, the angle 360 plus theta is exactly the same as the angle of 360 of just theta. All that you've done is you've taken your angle and you've gone all the way around back to where you started, okay? So therefore we can just go that anything, sine of theta is gonna be the same as sine of 360 plus theta. Similarly, cos theta, tan theta, it's all the same, because all you've done is gonna start it back to where you ended, okay? Again, just looking at the cost diagram, but we've gone through it. So now let's look at some examples, okay? So I'm gonna remind you about Sarkatoa. I'm going to remind you about the cast diagram. So it's all stations to Cape Town. And I'm going to see how else we do. So, okay, let's do the special triangles. It's going to be 60, 30, 2, 1, root 3. And the 45 degree triangles are going to be 1, 1, root 2. And that is 45 degrees. Okay, so let's talk about this. This tan squared 210 is what? Okay, the tan squared 210 is what? Do you agree that 210 can be written as tan squared 180 plus 30? Okay, minus 1 plus cos. And that can be written as 180 minus 60 times by sine squared, hmm, 405. Okay, so let's take this nice and slowly. If we've got 405, we're minus 360 because it means we've gone all the way around, okay? We've gone back. So that becomes a 5 and that becomes a 9 and therefore we've got 45. Aha, so that's sine squared 45. Okay, so now let's use our cast diagram. 180 plus 30 is in the third quadrant, so that is positive. So that just equals tan squared 30 minus 1 plus cos of 180 minus 60 is in the second quadrant. So it is going to be negative cos of 60 multiplied by sine squared 45. Okay, so tan squared 30. Tan of 30 is opposite over adjacent, so it's 1 over root 3, so it's 1 over root 3, all squared, okay, minus 1, plus times the minus is minus, cos of 60 is adjacent over hypotenuse, so it is a half multiplied by sine squared 45. Okay, so sine of 45 is opposite over hypotenuse. So it's one over root two, but then it's all squared. Okay, so now let's make this look pretty. Um, that becomes one, root three times root three is just three minus one minus a half is a half multiplied by one over 2, because root 2 squared is just 2. This is wrong. No, no, it's right, squared, squared, squared. So therefore, we've got 1 over 3 minus 1 over 4. So we could use our calculator, or we can just use common denominators of 12, so that becomes 4 minus 3, which is 1 twelfth. Okay, so the value of this huge thing over there is 1 twelfth. Right, let's try another one. Okay, but now, before we were looking at actual numbers, now we're just looking at angles or theoretical angles. Okay, so again, I'm going to draw my cast diagram so that we know where things are added, all stations to Cape Town. And let's see if I need anything else. Okay, so tan of 180 minus theta is over here, and that makes it minus tan theta. Sine of 360 plus theta, remember 360 plus or minus means that you're just going back to exactly where you started it, which is sine of theta. So that is going to be sine theta. All over, cos of 180 plus theta is in the third quadrant. So that's negative cos theta. And then tan of 360 minus theta. 
360 minus theta is in the fourth quadrant and that's going to therefore be negative tan theta. Okay, so do you agree that cancels with that? And this just becomes minus tan theta, because sine divided by cos is tan. Okay, so that wasn't so bad, hey? So don't freak out if you don't have any numbers. It's actually quite easy. It's actually easier, I think. Now we go back to numbers again. Okay. It looks very much like we're looking at 45 degree angle triangles. So let's just draw that out. So we've got, this is 45, this is 45, this is 1, 1. And root 2. Okay, 60 is pretty obvious. So now let's have a look at this. Obviously, we don't want it looking like that. So this could be written as cos of 360 degrees minus 45. Okay, do you agree? This could be written as cos of 360 plus 45 degrees. This would be sine 45 degrees. And this would be sine of 135 is going to be 90 plus. So it becomes sine of 180 minus 45 all over 750. Okay, so let's think about this. 750 minus 360 equals what? So that's a zero. 15 minus six is? nine and that's just a nine no hang on seven minus three is four okay we now need to subtract the 360 again so we go 490 minus 360 zero three one that's 130. not a very nice number let me check it we're going to go 750 minus 360. Oh, I hate it when it does this. 750 minus, okay, it's not picking it up, minus 3, 360 equals 390. Uh, minus, it was 390, not 490. That's what, minus 360 equals just 30. Idiot. Oh, because we cancelled once. That becomes a 3, and that's a 3, and then that becomes just... What did we say? Um, what did we just say? It was... becomes 30. So the angle is just 30. Okay, so this becomes... Where was that? Sine of 30 degrees. So we do actually need that other triangle. Uh, 60, 30... And it is 2, 1, root 3. Okay, so now let's do this. Okay, cars are negative, we need a cost diagram. All stations to Cape Town. So cars of 360 minus 45 is obviously just cars of 45 because of minus 45 but cos of minus 45 is fine because cos is positive in that quadrant so this is just cos 45 okay multiply that cos of 360 plus 45 takes it back into the first quadrant which means that it's still going to be cos of 45 nice and positive plus sine 45 and the sine of 180 minus 45 let's just say it would be in the second quadrant so it's going to be times by sine of 45 all over sine 30. Okay, so now we've got cos, cos, sine, sine, and what is the rule? The rule is cos, cos, sine, sine, and then you keep the sine. Okay. Hmm. So let's just check that. Cos, cos, sine, sine is a cos rule for sure. And then what do we have to do with that? We need to make sure that we know the rule. Okay, so it becomes cos of 45 my, no, plus 45 over sine of 30. Okay, so then what happens is it becomes cos of 90 over sine 30. Cos of 90 is just, oh sorry, it's not to change the sign. So it becomes cos of 0. <sighs> okay, wait, wait, let me just fix that. I don't know what I'm doing there because I actually just need a razor. Sorry, it, 
this change is signed to a minus. Uh, my minus. Oh dear, I don't know why that pen's not working now. Becomes a minus. So then this is zero. Cos of zero is one over sine of 30. Sine 30, how do I know cos zero is one? Because of the cos graph that does this. Wee! So cos of zero is one over sine 30. Sine is opposite of our part new, so that's a half, which equals two. So the final answer for this is two. Right, grade 11s, that's as far as we're going to go today. Um, join me again on what is today, Wednesday or Monday, and we will look at applying the reduction formula, 36 plus minus, and then we'll move on to cofunctions. Have a great day.